He's the ultimate destroyer. Here's your look at the new Jack Pacific, Godzilla King of the Monsters. This is King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah is the massive dragon-like destroyer with three heads capable of three times the destruction. Become the largest super species the world has ever seen as you fly into battle as living lightning storm to decide once and for all who is king of the monsters. Just before we have a look at this monster, we're going to first figure out how tall in measurements King Ghidorah stands. I know, somebody's yelling from the mob, you've just went right past its three heads. Well, that's because his, his wings are obviously going to be the tallest point, so we're going to measure the figure from there. The Ultra Measuretron, according to the top of King Ghidorah's wings, tells us that the figure stands, or its wings, make it a towering 7.7 inch monster which in centimeters, flipping that over right now, you're looking at King Ghidorah being 19.5 centimeters tall. Obviously, one size comparison you guys will want to see is how King Ghidorah, the smaller one that came packaged with Godzilla, how does that one stack with the larger King Ghidorah? Well, I have to kind of hold the wings in a same similar fashion, just so you guys can see the difference between the two. Uh, the smaller King Ghidorah is considerably smaller uh, one thing, actually, I do want to mention, because I know I'm going to forget it, and somebody's going to ask me later about it, and I totally want to not forget about it, is the way that they put the wings on the smaller version. Well, you guys have already seen the review of this one. At the very least, I would hope you've seen the review of this one. The wings sit, and they drop to a flat point, completely almost leveled to the floor. Uh, where they put the hinge, though, is they put the hinge right by the body, the main torso section of King Ghidorah. Which is smart, but unfortunately, one thing it does cause havoc with, though, is you can't really put the figure flat, just standing on a desk. Unless you've found, like, a display base or some means to hold the figure upright. This King Ghidorah, because I know I'm going to forget this, this King Ghidorah actually halved the wings, or about maybe two-thirds of the wings. The first third of the wing is actually hinged right there. So it actually allows the figure to stand upright, unlike the smaller one, which simply just couldn't do that. Smart thing that they actually made it, first of all, that the figures are a little bit different from one another, but also for the fact that they are kind of built differently too. They're not just taking the smaller one, blowing it up to give us this one right here. But really, if, truly, if this is the one that, if you are looking to display King Ghidorah on a shelf, the larger route is really the way to go because, like I said, the wings hinge in such a way that the, the beast doesn't topple over, unlike the smaller one, which unfortunately was really plagued with doing so. So if anything, this is really the one that you want to be hanging. This is the one that you want to be displaying on a shelf. This one also gets some added accessories that the smaller one didn't come included with. One thing I do like, and I think that all the larger beast creatures do come with these, is a little vehicle, something that somebody could pilot. The human resistance fighting against these monstrosities. And just to kind of give you a size comparison, if you look at the bomber, this is, by the way, a Northrop B-2 Spirit or B-2 bomber, stealth bomber for people that are probably more familiar with calling it a stealth bomber. But if you look at that and you look at that to the scale of King Ghidorah, if this is a true one-to-one -one scale, mm -mm -mm, you can see how much smaller humans are to these larger monstrosities. The B-2 bomber is a really nice looking piece, nothing really painted on it. It's actually made up of soft plastic. Um, there's really nothing that you can clip on it, but I guess much like the smaller beasts, you could suspend these from your ceiling and almost have it as if they're fighting and attacking King Ghidorah. So I really do like that. Something else I really am keen about are these little cityscapes that they they uh, have with the creatures. Now they are something that collapse. They, I mean, knocking them in any which way. You can kind of even see that crack line that's developed. That comes in three pieces. Just before we dismantle it, I just want to show you what that cityscape looks like. It's cast clearly here in all orange plastic. You can even see like a little clock tower, a few taller skyscrapers and some smaller buildings right there. I mean, not that it would be the case, but even if they had like a little landing area where you could put the, the bomber, but 
again, it does, it's not really enough clearance. So it does, of course, disassemble. I like also the way that it does disassemble where if you put it properly back in place, take the bottom, the bottom has the longest bottom section, the longest edge to it. You can then put this piece on top, everything lines up quite easily. And then this just again goes on top. There's nothing really too, there's not much holding it together, but at least, this is something so small, but I'm glad that they did it for Jack, the Jax toys. At least the bottom piece is a freestanding structure. Sometimes when you get these cityscapes, they sort of angle them in such a way that you sort of have to hold everything together and then very carefully put the top ending piece or at the top there just to kind of keep everything together. Here, you're really just stacking it on top of the base, the bottom piece. And those pieces just come together like that and you've got yourself a little cityscape the larger creatures are also going to come included with these as well so some of the other ones that we're going to have a look at as well take note that king Ghidorah has an orange one i think rodan has possibly a red one but we're going to have a look at that one in a future future video so we're just going to put that to the side try our best not to collapse the city there's of course casualties that we would have to consider and worry about let's have a look at king Ghidorah. Now, I absolutely love this version of King Ghidorah. Going back to something, I, again, I knew I was going to forget completely about. The big selling point for this one, the larger one versus the smaller one again. And we'll just reach off to the camera. There we go. There's the smaller one once again. Is again, those hinges. Love the fact that they put the hinges on about a third of the way up the wing versus this one right here, which was hinged so close to the body. It definitely makes things a much more stable fit. If you look at the other two, well, if you look at the other comparisons between the two, put one side by side, it seems as if this is a new mold. Like if you look at the tops of the wings here versus the tops of the wings right here, and you look at the torso, it does look like it's a brand new mold. It's not a case where they've just blown up or shrunk down one to get the other. Uh, we look at the two head sculpts here which might be a little bit harder of a feat to accomplish. The head sculpts do look like they are similar to one another. Also, the way that they're also tabbed into place is similar to one another as well. I'll we'll just put that one down here for a second. This one has the three different hinges on the heads in various different placements. This one has it in, well, actually even these two here have them about the mid, basically where the neck almost even connects to the torso. This one, however, does have the hinge at the top of the head. I'm not really sure why it specifically had to be there, unless maybe they just didn't want to have it in the case where if the head is rotating, it's not going to butt up against anything else. But I guess the hinge could have also been potentially there as well. So there is a little bit of posability that you can move with each of the independent heads. Each of the heads are glorious. Tons and tons of detailing that they put into there. Of course, the tongues, much like the smaller counterparts, are painted in, in pink. And the teeth and the white, the teeth and the eyes are painted in white. Again, a lot of glorious sculpting. Sculpting that is also accented by really great additional paint. Now, the paint seems not everywhere. You can get a lot of it at the top here, where if you get a close look, look at it, all the little scales and stuff that they put onto the torso section here. But a lot of the, uh, the darker paint seems more relegated to like the, the feet. There's the underclaws there and the tail. Uh, more of the torso kind of gets left a little bit more on blank. It does still get a fair bit of a wash, but just not to the levels that the legs get. Kind of wish that this was a little bit more, you know, consistent across the whole wingspan of Ghidorah here. Uh, the tail does have some posability. Those rotate back and forth. I guess we could look at the posability in this guy. Legs hinge back and forth as well. And of course, you've got the wings that hinge up and down. Now, the wings do give you a full wingspan, but um, they don't put a stopping point on the wings. So really, the wings can actually be dropped forward as well, whereas the smaller one seemed to have, like, as soon as it dropped to a leveled place to your whatever surface that you've got it displayed on, the wings seem to stop. Here, on the other hand, the wings were actually dropping beyond that point. So you can kind of have almost a little more of a docile pose where King Ghidorah is sort of resting. And you can have the wings kind of just draped down for the time being. Of course, one thing that will cause a problem is when you have the wings down completely, it does make the figure a little bit more top heavy, a little more forward heavy. 
surprisingly though, when you do bring the, the wings up, the piece has no problems at all standing. Likely this is gonna be the way that I'm gonna be displaying King Ghidorah anyways, simply just because I love the fact that I can have it on a shelf commanding presence in a way that only King Ghidorah can do. Again, you've got the smaller counterpart uh, like and sculpted, like I said, a little bit different from the larger one. This is going to be the one that I'm going to have suspended from my ceiling. But like I said, this one, this one is going to have a, a very special place on my shelf. And maybe along with that, we'll just bring back in the cityscape. We'll put the cityscape along with it. When we eventually get more of the beasts, these creatures are all going to have like a cityscape. And I'm probably going to try to put those all together. Uh, certainly for a play value, these are great for kids because kids love creatures like this. They also love destroying buildings, and I'm glad that Jack Specific included a building with King Ghidorah. Kids are certainly going to be freaking out when they start seeing the new Godzilla King of the Monster figures and toys hitting store shelves, which should be happening right now. Jack Specific had the official Godzilla launch day of April 1st, 2019. So if you guys were interested in picking these ones up based on these reviews, some good news. You should be able to now find these at your store shelves right now. We're, of, of course, still going to be looking through the various Godzilla King of the Monsters toys. We've already looked at the two packs. We're going to start looking at the medium-sized, if you want to consider these the medium-sized toys. And like Jack Pacific can only do, they're going to be also creating and releasing larger scale, specifically Godzilla, in a over-the-top, fun-to-carry-around-and-yet-extremely-large-sized Godzilla. We're going to be having a look at those in future reviews as well, so stay tuned. In the meantime, today we were having a look at the brand new Jack Specific Godzilla King of the Monsters, and this was the very mighty, destructive King Ghidorah. Fantastic. Love this one. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. And like I said, we're going to still be looking through the new Godzilla King of the Monsters toys from the folks over at Jack Specific. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.